Okay, in this video I'm going to do a work problem and at least in the textbooks that I use, uh, James Stewart's calculus book, which is a pretty popular calculus textbook, they kind of have three types of work problems. They have the tank problems, the spring problems, and kind of the cable rope problem. So I'm going to, uh, in this video, talk about the work required to again drain a tank. So the definition of work is the work is the integral of force times displacement. Um, and the general procedure for these tank problems is we're going to find, I shouldn't even say the area, we should say the volume. We're going to find the volume um, of a generic cross-sectional slice, so that hopefully this will make sense here in a second. Um, depending on if our units are in feet or in meters, if it's in feet you multiply by 62.5 pounds to come up then with your force. If you multiply by 9.18 times 1,000, the acceleration due to gravity, we're going to use water. So this is the density of water. That will then give you your force. We've got to calculate our displacement, our limits of integration, and then integrate. All right, so uh, let's do one of these. So in my problem here, um, what I have is, here's my little tank. Sorry, let me get it where I want it to be. All right, so in my tank, um, it's going to be a little triangular tank, so the face of it is a triangle, a little trough. It goes back 10 feet, and suppose it has a little spout on it, and the spout is 2 feet tall, and that's where the water is going to come out. So suppose the width at the top of the triangle is 3 feet, um, excuse me, that's its height, and its width is also 3 feet. So those are the dimensions of the... Um, of our nice little um, tank here. All right, so the first thing I said to do is come up with a generic cross-sectional slice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down x units from the top of the tank. So x is going to represent the distance, again, just simply from the top of the tank. And I can choose to make x from the top of the tank or the bottom of the tank. That is up to me. Usually for a lot of the problems, it won't matter. Um, for some of them, for example, if your tank is a, a, a sphere, you will have to be careful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drop down x units, and I'm going to take a little cross-sectional slice. And this cross-sectional slice has height delta x, that's what I'm going to call it. And my little slice will extend back through the tank, um, and I'm going to get, again, just a little a little kind of generic slab of water that's sitting there in my tank. Okay, so again, imagine almost like like pennies. You could you could chop a cylinder up into little pennies, little slivers. I'm chopping my tank up into little slivers. Okay, so we need to find the volume of this cross-sectional slice. That's the very first thing that I'm going to do here. Now, Okay, this is one thing. This in general is going to be the hard part, kind of coming up with this generically. Okay, it doesn't look exactly like it because the sides are a little slanted, but this cross-sectional slice to me almost looks like it would be a rectangle or a box. Um, so we're going to approximate the volume as though it were a box. So we're going to multiply by the length times the width times the height. Um, again, maybe we'll call maybe we'll call this distance across, that'll be our width. Notice depending on how far down x is, the width is going to change, right? If we're further down into the tank, the little width of that sliver of water is going to change. So we'll have to account for that. But notice the height is always the same, it's delta x. And notice the length of that little section of water would always be 10 feet. So the volume of the slice, again if we call the length 10, um, the width, we don't know. Again, that's going to change, so we're going to have to label this part more generically. Sorry, my hand's all in the way here. And we know the height of it is also delta x. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to figure out the width generically in terms of x. That is the distance I've uh, dropped down from the top of my tank. All right, so I'm going to draw another little picture here, and just usually there's just some geometry trick, trick, either using Pythagorean theorem. It seems like another common trick on these problems is what I'm going to use here, which is similar triangles. 
Okay, so I probably should have measured this one from the top, but it doesn't matter. I think things would have worked out easier. So again, it's three feet from the top, or three feet wide at the top, three feet at the bottom. Again, this is supposed to be a um, equilateral triangle. So I'm dropping down again x units, and then I'm going to be at some generic width. Well, I have to express that width in terms of x. So we can use similar triangles here. Notice the little triangle inside is going to have width w. <clears throat> Notice the height inside. Since the entire height is 3, well, the little height left over, so again, I'm doing this little triangle. The height left over would be 3 minus x. That would be the height. So similar triangles says we take the height of the big triangle and the width of the big triangle and we set that equal to, so we said height to width, it's hard to mess it up obviously it's the same thing, but we'll say height to width, that'll equal the height to the width of the little triangle. So this is just one, if you multiply we'll get w equals um, 3 minus x. So this is nice, I've now expressed the width in terms of basically the depth down that I am, that's what this represents. So again, it says the volume of the slice is 10 times the width, which is 3 minus x, times delta x. And again, that's usually the hard part to come up with. Um, again, not, you know, not so miserable here, but sometimes it can be a little tricky to get that. So let me erase this stuff. Okay, so now we've got the volume of the slice generically. The force on this slice of water, well again, since my units are in feet, we just take 62.5 and multiply it by 10 times 3 minus x times delta x. Now obviously you could simplify this down, but I'm kind of leaving it broken up just to illustrate, you know, again, where all the numbers are coming from. That's the slice. Well, let's think about the displacement that this little slice of water would have to go through to get up and out. Okay, so let's look at our picture again. Okay, we have to remember there's a two-foot spout here on the top of this tank in the first place. Well, the height of the tank, or excuse me, the depth down was x units, so to get this slice of water just to the top of the tank, it would have to travel a distance of x units, but then to get up and out, it would have to go another two units, so the displacement this slab of water will have to go through will be 2 plus x. If there were no spout, it would just be x units. If the spout was 50 feet tall, you know, the displacement would be 50 plus x. All right, so now this is nice. This is everything that goes inside of our integral. We still have to think about the limits of integration. But again, it says we take our, our force, 62.5 times 10 times 3 minus x. The displacement is 2 plus x. Our delta x comes out as a dx. The last thing we need are the limits of integration, but if you think about what does x represent? x represents the depth from the top of the tank, and assuming we're going to drain out the whole tank, what values would x have to range between? Well, it would start at the top of the tank, again, um, that's how we chose to measure it, in which case x would have value 0, you've gone 0 units down, and then it would have to go all the way to the bottom of the tank, um, and we said the height of the tank is 3 feet tall, so eventually x would have to go down to a value of 3 to get to the water at the bottom of the tank, so it our limits of integration then are simply going to be from the top, which is 0, to the bottom of the tank, which is 3, and that is now the integral you would have to calculate, and I am not going to integrate it. Um, this should be an easy one. Probably if you're, if you're at this point in your calculus career watching this, you, you, all you have to do, you know, multiply the 62.5 and the 10, um, distribute out the 3 minus x and the 2 plus x, and it should be pretty straightforward integration. So, all right, so this is kind of the idea in general for um, the, the volume problems. The only thing that's going to change 
for the most part, is just going to be the geometry. It seems like for the most part, you either get cylinders, in which you'll use Pythagorean theorem um, to set up your radius generically, or you'll get rectangles, in which case you're just using length times width times height. So, all right, I hope this example makes some sense. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email, and uh, otherwise, good luck out there.